my bad. Top of the fifth here at the Division II, three combination uh, Dodds Championship. And if anybody's wondering why the two and three are combined, is they didn't have enough teams to field a complete side on both divisions. So they thought it best to at least give out a division championship by combining the two. Yeah, because Rhoda, it was just Rhoda and Alkenberry, Bamberg, uh, had to fold and so did Siganella. Just and uh, and talking with some of the the coaches, basically with, like Men with Hill, they have 90 kids in their entire school. So basically, they put it out to their to their to their uh, student athletes. Do you want to play soccer or this? Because if we play soccer, we are not going to have enough for this other sport. So it, you hate to see that, but but it's nice for for smaller schools to have a chance to yeah. have all their kids come out and actually participate. That's I mean that's a pretty cool thing. Just on the top of the fifth. Bilbs makes a nice uh, nice shot up the right field lot, or the, excuse me, the third base line. However, uh, third baseman Westrich was there to make the play and get the force out. We've seen some excellent defense here now. We are, and it's really, really exciting. I like games like this where Shape was able to come back from behind, and now they're leading the way. Again, one out, Shape leading the way, 8-4 to four over Bitburg. And uh, up to bat right now is number seven, Eric Olsen. He singled last time he was up. Eli Olson. Eli. Yeah, well, uh, sorry, Eli Olson. I'm Eric. Yes. Yes. That's what I meant to say. <laughs> See, I was just checking you, Eric, to make sure oh, you were on thank top you. of things. Thank you. Oh, I have a question for you guys. How do you like your Coach Majorwitz? Extra crispy? Or, uh... <laughs> yeah, it's a little warm out today, so hopefully you're wearing yeah. sunscreen if you're here. I think it's an artificial light. I'm like George Hamilton. I hope <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I don't tan. You're I just a little bit burn. more red than tan, though, so yeah, yeah, that's kind of a problem. Again, we've got Eli Olson, left fielder, up to bat, singled last time up. Looks to be one ball, one strike, one out. Shape leading the way, eight to four in this Division Two Three championship. No beards in this game, though. No. Well, we have the chin strap beard from, uh, from the catcher from uh, from Bitburg. So that's true. That is true. Got a little little bit of facial hair going. I, either way, I. At that age, I wouldn't have been able to pull that off. <laughs> yeah, it would have been kind of tough. I have to agree with you. Two balls, one strike again to Eli Olson. The windup in the pitch from Kuhn. High. Of course, the, uh, the beard we were referencing earlier was C.J. Kellogg from the uh, the champ Division One champion patch team. Uh, had quite the beard going. It almost like a, an Abraham Lincoln Amish beard. Well, he had the, the Brian Wilson going there. Not it the beach wicked. boy. <laughs> Not the beach boy, <laughs> Not no. the beach boy. Strike. Two right we there. We strive for accuracy here at AFN. <laughs> we really do. And that was that was a beautiful pitch right there from Kuhn. Um, you're still seeing some great control and velocity out of him. So, uh, got to give him a lot of credit for the performance he had out here today. Full count, wind up in the pitch. Ball four. Uh, that uh, you were talking about, uh, Tyler. You were talking about framing. I, mm -hmm. I thought he framed it well, but yeah, that was uh, that was good. But I guess it was a little outside. Still a nice pitch, though. Kuhn doesn't seem to be getting rattled from any of those walks. I believe that's the second one he's had today. And being a lefty, you could you could make a living. Yep. Left-handed pitcher or a 6'4", taller basketball girl, then, you know, you're pretty much <laughs> guaranteed a job. That is the truth. How long did Jesse Orozco pitch? <laughs> Seemed like forever. Yep, yep. I think even the fans thought it was forever. <laughs> we got Zach Nichols at the plate right now. And uh, he was the catch we were mentioning earlier with his little chin strap beard. Not one happy. ball, one strike to Zach. I was going to call him the chin strap. I think we should go with that. The you chin know? strap. The chin strap. It sounds a little bit cooler than something else I can come up with. I don't know. They don't pay me for those things. Yeah. Are the Bitbergs averages or is that their bench press? <laughs> you know what? Actually, we were talking with uh, Bryce's dad. And Bryce said his son at the age of 15 could bench over 300, and now he's 17 and benches more than that. Well, he, he looks like Freddie Jones from Scooby-Doo if he, like, worked out 24-7. 24-7, That's what he looks yes. like to me. <laughs> Very true. Nice little cut right there. That's going to bring it up to two balls, two strikes. And again, this is the catcher, Zach Nichols, at the plate. Bitburg is behind, 4-8. to eight. And this is the Division 2-3 Dodds Boys Baseball Championship. Clay Kuhn is still on the mound for shape. I think they're going to leave him in there as long as they possibly can. His composure is really well right there. Nice little chop at the third base. See if they can turn the double play. There's one. And not in time. Not in time for two. Good job of uh, keeping the ball down, not letting it get away from them, and making good, uh, good throws. And... Uh, Take a look at the instant replay right here. You can see it comes right up and, uh, well, second baseman gets a hold of it and makes a late throw, but they still got the runner out at second. And let's face it, that's the most important thing anyway. 
And the runner going into second did an exact what he it did exactly what he needed to do. He slid in there, he slowed down the second baseman, and uh, thus they were I, able to at least get a run on the bag. Is Nichols hurt or is it just courtesy runner, I believe? Uh, Nichols is a catcher, so yeah. he gets the courtesy runner so we can put on all of the gear as we were talking mm -hmm. about earlier. Which is kind of odd. I've never heard of that before until this uh, week with the catcher getting a courtesy runner. Usually the pitchers, I understand. Well, I always believe the catcher could come back into the game because I know that that was a rule as well. Ah, uh, okay, okay. We've got Because not, not too many people can do it or will, you know, volunteer for catching, so. Very true, very true. To me, not enough equipment on there. Christian yeah. Edelsink <laughs> up to bat right now. Number 14, he is an outfielder, junior. Well, the masks are getting a little more stylish these days. It's true. They're almost like the hockey one yeah. right there. A little like Cujo action, Curtis Joseph. Or <laughs> Shape leading the way 8-4 to four right now in this Division 2-3 championship. Game is winding down to a close. Yeah. Ball past there, bounce right off the plate. Runner's going to advance to second. Yeah, give me a call in case Dodds ever does ice hockey. So. Yes. <laughs> That's a rare, like I said, rare pass ball from uh, a wild pitch from this battery. They've done a pretty good job keeping that to a minimum this game. Yeah, it just looked the way it came off the plate. It was a little extra umph to it. Mm -hmm. Put a little hot sauce on it. No English, like we talked about that little yeah. uh, little dribbler down the first yeah. base line in the beginning of the game. So what do you think is going through uh, the dugout right now? What do you think Coach Phillips is talking to his players? I think Coach Phillips is, uh, he's definitely going to put a little bit of pressure on him, but not more than they can take. That's what I'm thinking right now. That fastball comes low and inside. Sounded like Lincoln Park lyrics. <laughs> Did it really? Yeah. Eh, well, you know, I try. Eh. I try. We're I'm not all. as good as, uh, you know, the basement <laughs> comments or, you know, singing, but we're getting there. We're getting there. Uh. And the pitch, strike. Mm. Wow. That was a nice low pitch. Coming right after a second low pitch at the... Uh, it's got got just bit the zone, though. Two and two count. Two balls, two strikes, two outs as well. So the trifecta of twos right here. That's numerology, right? Yeah. I just made that up, and we're going to go with it. Yeah. It's like the penguins on Madagascar. Smile and wait for <laughs> Just nod your head. Yeah. Clay Kuhn still on the mound, kind of wiggling his shoulder around there. Maybe he's getting a little tired. We'll find out here after this pitch. Nice rip there from Eidenshank. Oh, drop just over the, the center fielder, Muldoon. The runner coming home to score. And Eidenshank comes into second, standing up. He'll hold up there. So a couple of run, uh, run comes in there for Bitburg back on the board. We think it's going to... This is the rally rally on two. We're going to take a look at the instant replay right here. Nice connection. Popped it. And this... this could go, I mean, it's not an error, but it could go down. It's a mistake on the center fielder coming too far underneath the ball. That was an easily catchable ball. Well, they were playing up on him a little bit. I didn't think, like I said, wasn't really one of their power players. Yeah. So yeah, they were playing up on him a little bit, and uh, I think it, the positioning kind of hurt him more than anything else. Eight to five, Shape still leading the way. Bitburg is slowly inching back. Got number 11, Evan Less, the pitcher, up to bat right now. Struck out earlier in the day. Backup quarterback. Falling in the footsteps of his brother, Matt. Looking at two strikes to him right now. That last one there is a foul ball. Kuhn is now up to 66 pitches and 42 of them for strikes. So, excuse me, 47. Now, do you think as a coach, I took Eric, math that you, Marine, so. <laughs> <clears throat> would you... Um, Excuse me, would you pull him after, say, 60 or so pitches, or would you just let him finish it out being I, the last I, game? I think you finish it out. I don't know what the time is right now, so I, I think this could be Bitburg's last strike right here. One ball, two strikes, two outs, strike hey, three. a miss right there. That's uh, another great strikeout by Kuhn. Bitburg's able to put one run here in the top of the fifth. We're going into the bottom of the fifth. And the shape is leading replay. the way. Yeah, it's a replay, I'll tell you right there. That's um, another, it, yeah. another great pitch by Kuhn just off the outside corner of the plate. And uh, good enough for another strikeout. Eight to five, Shape leading the way in this Division 2-3 combination championship. Like we were saying, the time limit, you get an hour and 50 or seven innings is the bottom of the fifth here coming up. Shape will be up to bat, and this potentially could be the final inning seeing how uh, we're getting kind of close to that hour and 50 mark. So they need another quick one, two, three so they can get to the next inning. 
They do. Last time you said it, Eric, the Bitburg was able to get them, though. So maybe they'll be able to squeeze that out. And you were saying, too, that um, it's our belief you're not able to start another inning with um, about 10 minutes or less I in the game. I believe so. Which would make sense. But if Shape is able to do what they did back in the third inning where they put up eight runs, they could eat up the rest of the clock and not have to worry about anything else. And that, that's unfortunate. I, I, I do believe the championship game should go to the limit, the seven, seven innings. Again, this has been brought to us by AFN Europe and Vice Media. So thanks to everybody who's put together um, all the effort and the camera and all the work here. We really, really appreciate that. And we're streaming live on AFNEurope.net. So if you're out there listening to us, thanks for joining us. And of course, if you don't have the internet, you probably can't hear us right now anyway. But you can check out the game <laughs> on June 9th at noon. We'll be rebroadcasting it across AFN. We've got number 21, Thomas Muldone, up to bat the junior. Last time he singled. First pitch, swing, foul ball, back over the backstop. Well, Muldoon might be looking for a little bit of rep retribution for letting that ball go back over his head. Strike right down the middle. A nice Hot pitch right there from Evan Les. Evan's done a really, really good job of picking up where Austin yeah. Schmidt left off. There it is! Swing. Quality middle relief from Evan Les. And it's just what Bitburg needs. Like we were saying, they got kind of close. They're only three runs down now. Shapes leading the way eight to five. And uh, this could be just what they need. Get this uh, quick one, two, three, and get back in there. Again, bottom of the fifth. It's definitely a strike way past the uh, checkpoint for his swing. Strike one. And you know, he already gone through customs at that point. So. <laughs> Connor Manning's who we're talking about, number 20, the shortstop up the bat. It almost seems like they're uh, they're losing their plate discipline a little bit. They're uh, they're known for taking their pitches, like I said. Even though that was probably a good pitch to swing at, takes <laughs> yeah. it right up the uh, the right field side for a nice base hit. Nice little poke there from Connor. That's a couple singles for him in this game, and he's come out clutch when they need him to. Let's go ahead and take a look at that instant replay right here. You can see the pitch came dropping in, kind of a 12-6 curve, and uh, Manning was able to just punch that one in there right past the first baseman. You know, Les's delivery is almost sidearm. Kind of does. That's a strike right there to number nine. Definitely three-quarter. Jacob Conkright. So, no balls, one strike, no outs in the bottom of the fifth. I'd like to see a kid be like Kent to Colby, you know, the whole submarine, Dan Quisenberry. I know I'm dating myself again. <laughs> Just a little bit, but uh, <laughs> nice little bobble there at first. Won't be a fourth play, but he overran the base. Let's see if he can go to third. This is a pickle here. Uh, he's just going to take it right there. Yeah. That's what we call an awkward double play. That's definitely not a textbook double play, but I'm pretty sure Bitburg will take it any way you can get it. So, uh, How do you score that one that way as well? <laughs> yeah. No that one's right there. We'll see if we can pull up a, a replay here in a second, but that's the end of the fifth right there. Yeah, if you check out the replay, you got him at first, and then uh, got caught in the pickle. It's base running mistake, a rarity from the, uh, the shape team here, but Bitburg remains strong and manages to get back another uh, another at bat here. Got about 20 minutes left in the game. Again, this is the Dodds 2-3 division championship for boys baseball. Shape is leading the way 8-5. to five. I want to thank the Ramstein High School Audio and Visual Club for running the cameras this game. A lot of great volunteers came out to help us out. And uh, big shout out for those guys. This is the Dodds Division 2-3 combination boys baseball championships. I'm, our, I'm Air Force Sergeant Tyler Alexander. With me is Air Force Sergeant John Archiquette and also a bomb holder coach Eric Majorwitz. Thanks for joining us, guys. Thank you. It is great to be here. Like I said, it was a great day for baseball today. Had a couple of great games this morning. Had the Division I championship with Ramstein and Patch. Of course, Patch taking that after a uh, pretty controversial game, but overall a good game nonetheless. And then this game is shaped up to be an incredible one. We've got two great teams out here. And uh, what do you think for the rest of the game, Eric? Well, well you see, no, the, I was going to go Madden <laughs> on you there. You know, Madden with a Telestrator and baseball probably wouldn't have worked either. Uh, I, I think this is do or die time for Bitburg. Not to be a sports cliche machine, but, you know, down 8-5. Uh, you need three runs here. And uh, I want to see it go seven. So I kind of I hope they get three here. Sorry, Shape. <laughs> you know, with, with not having a, a nine-inning game, kind of takes away from the, uh, the seventh-inning stretch we're used to having. Well, should we do it now on the fifth? <laughs> uh, bring a bring a little uh, 
little take me out to the ball game. Or God bless America. Or for the Brewers fans, roll out the barrel. Hey, Eric, well, where's the, the sausage race? Sausage race. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and we're in Germany. Exactly. I, I always pick the sour the uh, the sauerkraut or the sauerkraut. Yeah. The, uh, the German one win yeah. anyway. I, I personally, I think it's rigged. Oh. Nice little shot there from Matt Flood to lead off the inning. One turns to the top of the sixth. What turns like he's gonna go two on that one, but uh, Wiseman comes back to first base. He's gotten two singles today, a double, and uh, he struck out earlier in the day. So not a bad day from Matt Flood, center fielder uh, number six. Senior this year. Here's the instant replay, as you can see. A nice little shot right to the first base, but he just can't quite handle it. And uh, Flood turns back around wisely and heads back to first base. Don't want to get too greedy in a game like this. Uh, it took a nasty hop there. Are they scoring in an error? Or? I, th I think that's going to be a single. Gonna have, yeah. Okay. yeah. We're looking at Colton Lund, the second baseman. He struck out last time, number eight. He's up to bat right now. And still, Clay Kuhn is pitching for Shape. Shape leading the way eight to five in the top of the sixth. Nice little shot out there. That's going to drop in for a single. Lund is going to advance to second. This is exactly what Bitburg needs to do right now. The cure that ails you. Got number 16, Austin Schmidt, coming up to bat. And uh, I think Austin's got enough frustration for the way things yeah. went for him pitching in the third inning when he gave up eight runs. And I think uh, we might see some magic happen. Ivan Drago-ish. You know, if yeah. he hits a home run here, if he, if he ties, he ties. Yeah. I must break you. I must break you. <laughs> <laughs> Tying run at the plate. They've got a runner on second and a runner on first. Ball one. Austin Schmidt up to bat. I think we've come full circle. We've yeah, had two stolen references Lundgren and then a Dolph has like, <laughs> He has like a doctorate and he yeah. speaks like six languages. So he's well, not English, just a muscle He doesn't head. speak English very well. So we'll see if that's one of those that he jots down. One ball, one strike. Big Austin. cut for Schmidt. I think you heard us talking about how he's, uh, he's <laughs> capable of turning this game around yes. because he was trying to do that with that swing right there. Foul well, ball. He, he ate a kindergartner between innings. <laughs> Two balls, one strike. Hey, he does look full right protein. now. Protein. That's pro. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I got nothing. He's on the Atkins diet. <laughs> I got nothing. So Two balls, one strike. Your, par your parents have a kindergartner <laughs> named Atkins. You may want to start looking around. Runner on second and third, or second and first, excuse me. Austin takes a ball right there. Two balls, two strikes, no outs after two singles. And that pitch is a little bit upstairs. It almost makes you wondering if Kuhn's a little bit uh, a little fatigued here. See if they turn the double play. One and no. Austin is safe in first, but he does help advance the runner to third. Looking at a runner on third and first with one out. That, uh, the throw was close there on first base. Makes you wonder if it was any other <laughs> any other batter if uh, it would have been a double play. Well, you know, muscle weighs more than fat, so it True, I think he's got enough to propel him, though. So <laughs> he's, he's, got a, he's got enough. We need that NBC version, you know, the more you know. <laughs> Again, dating myself. Got Bryce Randall up to bat, number 10, third baseman. We'll see if he can pull one off into the left field. Schmidt goes for second. They're going to hold the throw. So we've got runners in second and third. Both runners in scoring position. Bryce takes that swing for that ball for a strike. So uh, no balls, one strike. Top of the sixth, one out. The windup from Kuhn, runners to second and third. Little chop right there, foul ball. Looks to be like it came off his finger. It's not gonna feel too great. He, Two strikes. He, he needs his ascot. That's what he needs. Is that what it is? Mm-hmm. And the mystery machine. Yes. Let's go ahead and take a look at that instant replay right there. Yeah, you can see when he swung, it came definitely inside on his hands. Boom. That's gonna definitely, he's gonna feel that one for a while. The windup in the pitch, high, ball one. One ball, two strikes. Again, runner on third and second. We're top of the sixth, the Division Two, Three Dodds European Baseball Championships. Ball two right there, two balls, two strikes. Good eye by Bryce Randall. His plate discipline's pretty impressive. You know, he really wants to rip one out there being the tying run right now. Well, with two runners in scoring position, it's better just to get on base and uh, Keep the, keep the inning going, keep the game alive. Kuhn winds up, delivers, swing. Big swing and a miss. Two outs. Runners on second and third. Again, Shape still leading the way, eight to five. We uh, got about, we had about 20 minutes when we started this inning, so we're looking down maybe around the 10-15 uh, mark. 
Let's go so. ahead and take a look at this instant replay here, this swing and a miss from Bryce Randall. That's a nice pitch right down there. And uh, as you can see, Workman gets up, learned his lesson last time, and uh, <laughs> tags Randall right away. <laughs> We've got Devin Billups up to bat. Nice cut right there. And he can tie this thing with one swing. And he did it, he actually did in the semifinal game. He had a nice little poke out there, about 340 uh, feet past center field for a, a beautiful grand slam. Grand salami. First pitch, cut into the backstop. It's gonna be a strike. Two outs right now, Devin Billups up to bat. Takes a deep sigh there. Ball one, Takes one ball, one strike. On one. Makes you think, you know, he might not be able to get a grand slam out of this one, but I think a three-run home run in this, in yeah, this, he'll take in this it. game, <laughs> he'll take it. I think might be a little bit bigger. He'll take it and run with it, because that'll be extremely impressive. Go, Chopper passed, third, uh, shortstop's able to hold on to that one. Gets the out. Wow, and that is a big out right there. Shortstop takes an excellent ball right there, and uh, that was a t took a tough hop, and we haven't gotten the official word yet. Let's go ahead and take a look at the replay right here. Cuts it, hits it hard, tomahawks it hard down into the ground. There's the out. I'm sure if you're Billups, you want that one back. Shape acted like that was the end of the game. We're uh, waiting to get the final on that one. And um, it's still, and yeah, we'll see what happens here. Looks to be that Bitburg is gonna go ahead and take they were the were quickly field. running out there. They're not gonna leave anything open there. We're bottom of the sixth right now, and like we said, you can't start an inning with under 10 minutes left, and that's pretty much where we're at right now. I think we've got about uh, maybe seven minutes left in the game, so we'll definitely finish up the bottom of the sixth. And I'm gonna uh, actually have to it's say the it's- the time expired, I believe. So if they can get them out of here in six minutes or less- Then they can go ahead and play it. So uh, you, I bet you- In the time you work out your abs, <laughs> if they can get it going, you know. I think now more than anything, you're gonna see, you're gonna see uh, Shape, shape start this, you know, well, Shape's gonna take some pitches. They shape better. should take some pitches right now. They should definitely have, they could look at every single strike and just watch it go by and, and they win this game. And I would. I, I would too. <laughs> I'm not against that as a win because this is the Division 2-3 championship. Again, Shape leading the way eight to five right now. Got about seven minutes left in this game. See so Colin Heffelstein taking the, uh, the plate, the senior first baseman. Singled last time he was up. We'll see if this goes in there. And uh, Evan Les, not wasting any time, Want to get to the, wants to get these batters three up, three down. First pitch though, ball, one ball, no outs. Pop up, out of the infield, so there's not gonna be an infield fly rule. There's gonna, oh. uh, little bobble right there. He's able to hold on for a single. Colin Eppelstein, uh, Eppelstein, two singles now today's game. Doing pretty well. And that's a that's a tough that's a tough ball to catch for any of them, but you know the shortstop probably could have came back out and made a better play on that. And this is not what Bitburg wants right now. They need to get these batters three up, three down. We're going to start off at the top of the lineup now with Austin Effort Jesse. He singled last time he came up to bat. The wind up in the pitch, ball one. And the thing that the viewers might not see right now is. Uh, it's a bright sunny day out here, and that sun is sitting exactly where that ball probably was. So I'm sure that probably played a big part in that drop. High, way high. Looks like he was trying to throw some type of curve and just couldn't hold on to it and it kept just hung up there. Two balls, no strikes, no outs. Bottom of the sixth of this division, two, three championship. Swing and a miss. Two balls, one strike. Earlier in the day, we had the Division I championship, which saw Patch and Ramstein face each other, and Patch was able to hold out for the win, and uh, they are a three-peat champion in Division I baseball. 2010, 2011, and now 2012. That's impressive in any sport. Give a big- And they were runner-ups in 2009, so. Wow, so they've had a really solid program for the last few years. Mm -hmm. And they also had a, a player drafted last year, Kevin Cohos. He was a ninth round pick, 272 overall by the Seattle Mariners. Uh, he signed for uh, $650,000 signing bonus. Not bad at all. Well, he had a f he had a full ride to Ohio State, but you know you can always go back to college. Yeah. Change your opinion That's on that a one. super GI bill. Yes. <laughs> <laughs>
He played center field, didn't he? I believe uh, he was a pitcher, shortstop center field. He was a transfer okay. from Lake and Heath. So there's a, there's a few other kids uh, that that have played college ball. The, the Grota Luchins, there's two of them at Trinity in, uh, International. Also takes a big cut on that one, the swing and a miss, and he'll strike out. So we got one man on, one man out, and uh, time is ticking down on Bitburg. So we had about seven minutes, like we said, at the top, at the bottom here of the six when we started this half of the inning, and uh, I'm not quite sure they're going to be able to finish it in time. To, to say earlier that uh, Dodds does have some pretty good athletes, and there, and, you know, that's proof right there. You can go on eBay, and like Kevin, Kevin Cohos has like five or six cards right now on eBay. Wife wouldn't let me buy one. <laughs> A wild pitch right there Sorry, from Evan honey. Bless. So uh, we'll see the runner advance. Colin Heffelstein will advance to second base. And this is exactly where Bitburg does not want to be. Runner in scoring position, one down, and we've got number eight, James Workman, who singled last time up. You know, if you squint, it kind of looks like a Yankees athletic skate. I could see that. The score does not reflect that. Though. No. <laughs> Well, you know, it, it, it kind of fits with shape in their small ball and their... And their Definitely. Their Excellent nice little poke Workman. right up there past the first baseman. Workman Runner's is Workman-like. <laughs> Runner's going to advance to third. Nice little single there. One down. And fitting to fitting to shape's game plan, you haven't seen any shots go towards you know towards the fences at all. Just nice little ground balls like you see here on this instant replay from Workman, and uh, that's how they've been manufacturing runs, just playing good fundamental small ball. And it's nice to see too the shape is aggressive in their base running. That most people don't take that turn to go to second, but that's an aggressive stance. Most people trying to run out out to the uh, right hand side of the bag. Them turning in, they're looking to go to second on all of these plays. If it's a pass ball or a fumble ball, they're going to take advantage of it. And like you said, that aggressive base running just leads to more errors by the defense. Strike one on number 17, Nick Westrick. Runner's going to advance to second. So again, we've got runners in scoring position, second and third. This is the bottom of the sixth. Shape is leading the way eight to five for this Division two three Dodds European Baseball Championships. Looking to his third base coach for some type of sign, whether to bunt, swing away. We'll see what happens here. Looks to be showing a bunt. A foul ball. Maybe he's a fan of ace of base. <laughs> it's good. I got that reference. Yeah. It took me a second. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, it's no Barbie girl. That's but, true. You know. That's true. Um, you see, he just started, he just started singing <laughs> ace of base now, too. We've got ace of base, the Bee Gees. Yeah. Uh, free ride earlier in the day. <laughs> yeah. Nice little swing right there. That looks to be uh, in there in time. Runner is going to score, though, with two outs down. So nine to five. Shape just tacking them on, making Bitburg really work to see if they want an inning. Okay, there you can do an obvious Dolly Parton. I was, gonna, I was waiting <laughs> for it. I was waiting for it. <laughs> I didn't think we were going to go there, but I was mistaken. Well, you know, Dolly Parton and uh, Sylvester Stallone did a movie together. That's true. Clay Coon, Rhinestone on. Cowboy. He's like, let me get away from that real <laughs> quick and talk about the pitch. <laughs> Clay Coon is at the plate right now, and uh, it looked to be about three minutes left. I believe that's what they were saying to the umpire right there. That was a big hit for Glenn Campbell. <laughs> <laughs> nice wow. little poke out there. They're going to keep that run going. Runner scores, fumble out in right field. Clay Coon's going to have a standing double. And that was probably the best hit we've seen yet from Shape today. Excellent piece of hitting right there from Clay Kuhn. And uh, fitting that an excellent pitching performance, you finish it up with an excellent piece of, uh, piece of batting. We're going to go ahead and take a look at that hit right here. See that double with the pitch. Nice connection. Really drove his hands out there into the ball and uh, got a little help from the right fielder. Would have been a single no matter what, but a uh, little bobble out there in right field is able to come into a standing double. Now, when you say connection, I think of a rainbow connection. Very nice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now I was just turning to karaoke. On. <laughs> Strike, a little foul ball right there on Sam Mans, right fielder, number 14. Again, shape leading the way now 10 to 5 in the bottom of the sixth. I don't think we'll see it go to a seventh as we're approaching the time limit. Again, an hour and 50 minutes is the max for the Division 2-3 Dodge European Championship. Little chopper back up to the uh, pitcher. Going to throw it there. That's going to uh, retire the inning. Looks like they're going to try and squeeze in one more, actually. The umpire's saying, let's go, let's go, let's go. I know Shape's going to want to uh, try and squeeze out some extra time here. We'll see. 
What do you think, shape, take the field kind of slow, or do you think that they're in the right idea to kind of hustle out there? I think as long as the inning has started, you can, you can finish that inning. All right, well, you wanted it to go to seven innings, and it looks like it's gonna go that direction right now. We're at the uh, Thank you, top Saint of Drew. the seventh. So yeah, it looks like we're gonna see the Bitburg offense out there one more time. You think it's gonna, they've got enough Ooh, left? Death Punk. I would hope so. <laughs> They're only down by five runs. Again, this is the Division 2-3 Dodds European Championship. Shape leading the way 10 to five. I hope Bitburg has enough to kind of make a game out of it. It would be a, a nice, exciting way to kind of end this. Then we have to explain the uh the overtime rules as it may. Yeah, did we want to go that route? <laughs> Maybe Shape can put them away three down, three up, three down. No, nothing against Bitburg. I hey, think as uh, long as Taco Bell's still open after the game, everything is copacetic. Oh, you're good then. I think uh, you don't have anything to worry about. <laughs> so Coon back out on the mound again, and uh, you gotta say this is a full day for him. Four yeah. innings in the first game, and then now. You know, a full day here. 76 pitches, 52 for strikes. Almost CC Sabathia numbers right there. You know, uh, CC Sabathia is the uh, record holder for most pinstripes for the Yankees. <laughs> He's well, a rather large man. As, yes. As a Brewers fan, I definitely have to say that I, I love the days of CC Sabathia, the three months that we had him. <laughs> he was a great rental. He was. <laughs> Start of the uh, top of the seventh inning. Bitburg up to bat. We've got Eli Olsen, the left fielder. Eight Ks for Kuhn today. Nice work by Kuhn. That's about one per inning in a Dodds game. That's pretty good. Eli takes a swing and a strike for his first, first pitch. No balls, one strike. Especially against this Bitburg offense. As we said before, 45 run differential so far in this tournament. Hung a 23 spot on Helen Fells to open the tournament up. So we know this team is capable of putting runs on the board. We'll see if they can get five runs that they need right now. Nice little poke out there and caught by the right fielder. Eli Olsen doing all that he can, but it's just not quite enough yet. We'll see how the rest of the team can fare. We've got the catcher coming up, Zach Nichols. He's had a couple singles today. Maybe he can get this momentum going the way that Bitburg needs it to go. Well, if we go to extra innings, I'll explain it in John Madden. So all right, that'll work uh, there's out There's your well. treat okay. if we can get that far. Top of the seventh inning, first pitch to Nichols. Looks to be a ball. Looks like Coon's still got some velocity behind his pitches. Nichols walked twice and scored all three times. And a fielder's choice in the fifth inning. That was a big swing from Nichols right there. Fouled that one off into the backstop. One out right now, top of the seventh inning in this Division 2-3 Dodds European Championship. Shape leads the way five to, or excuse me, 10 to five. Some type of sign there between uh, Kuhn and his catcher. I'm not quite sure what that motion was. Takes that pitch for a ball. Looks to be the hurry up sign. Maybe he's trying to get these in and out so they can get uh, this game wrapped up. And the pitch. He has a date. He has a date, very <laughs> nice. Well, that hanging uh, curveball is not gonna do it for him. Stayed up and outs. Ball three. You know, it's hard with the, the size of these Bitburg players. You don't know where the their bat ends and their hands begin. <laughs> Pop up out to center field. That looks like it's going to be caught. They are one out away from uh, the championship right now. Two down. Muldoon holds good to his, uh, to his captaincy. He's uh, playing very well out there in, in center field and didn't let his team down on that one. This will be their first title. Christian Elvisink is up to bat. He's had a walk and a couple singles today. And uh, we'll see if he can get this rally on two for his team. If not, Shape's going to come away with a win. Now, would you guys prefer it to end in a strikeout or in a pop fly? I think it's I think it's fitting if it ends in a strikeout because we've seen we've seen some excellent pitching out here from Kuhn today. Well, it's not going to end on that pitch, that's for sure. Excellent shot there in the center field in for a single. Played that one to the second baseman to hold him up at first. I think Ed and Shinka heard you on that one. <laughs> I know he may have tried to prove <laughs> me wrong there. Got number 11, Evan Less, the pitcher, up to bat. So this could be a pitcher versus pitcher duel to end the inning. Again, two outs, shape leading the way, 10 to 5, top of the seventh. Strike one. Coombs still going strong. Evan took that pitch looking and uh, go with pitch number two. Nice little connector out there. That's going to get in for a single. Runner's going to advance to second. 
Runners now on second and first, and we've got, uh, looks to be Matt Flood coming up, and Matt Flood's had a really good game today, and uh, you were saying, John, earlier in the day, he's not doing too shabby that way either. No, he's he's had a great tournament so far. Well, he's you can tell by the uniform, he's working hard. Oh, definitely. Need some tight or <laughs> something. <laughs> Chopper right down there to uh, second baseman. And that's gonna end base, the game. That's gonna end the game right there. Wow, big win for Shape. They won, they won the game their way. They did, and they played small ball, so congratulations to Shape. They're the Division 2-3 Dodge European Baseball Champions after de defeating Bitford 10 Oh, wow, five. did you see that? That is an excellent win right there for the Shape team. Coach Goff's got to be happy, and uh, I think it's time to see that mullet, that mullet baseball. Somebody just did a backflip. I think that was Clay Coon. That would have been impressive. Yeah. Coon's a big guy, I'm not going to lie. So, Mullet baseball time here in Ramstein, Germany, as Shape has defeated Bitburg for the Division 2 3 title. Really, really nice win. They yeah. were down 3 or 4 to 0 at the end of the top of the third, and uh, they were able to put away eight runs in the bottom of the third that really set the tone for this game. Well, they, they played their way. You know, they manufactured runs through stolen bases. They, you know, forced them into making mental mistakes through aggressive base running, and uh, it kind of, kind of goes to show you that uh, you don't have to have five guys who can bench press 400 pounds to be able to, you know, win a baseball game. Again, thank you to everybody who's participated in today's event, to AFN Europe and to Vice Media, also the kids from the Ramstein High School's audio-visual production, and uh, really, really appreciate all the help. I'm Air Force Sergeant Tyler Alexander. With me is Air Force Sergeant John Archiquette, also a bomb holder coach Eric Majorwitz, and this has been the Division 2-3 Dodge European Championship game. Thank <laughs> you.